WCBS News Time 543 on Drive Time. It's an ongoing debate here in the U.S. Should smartphones be banned from schools? Well, the government of Norway is pushing for a ban after several studies there found a lot of benefits. Joining us on Drive Time is psychologist Dr. Lee Richardson, the founder of the Brain Performance Center. Doctor, what happened to those Norwegian students after their schools banned smartphones? They found that, for the, and particularly with the girls, but they found both the in girls their GPA improved and their likelihood of attending an academic high school increased. And, and just as importantly, they found that the psychological issues, the anxiety, the depression that those middle school girls were, were facing decreased dramatically. I mean, it reduced the number of sessions by almost 60 percent. Why the disparity? Why do smartphones seem to be so much more psychologically damaging for girls? Well, I think it's because of the way that girls use smartphones. They use it for social media, and social media is it, comp- it makes us compare. And when you compare, you know you have a winner and a loser. And you may not be the loser, but if you see yourself as that way, then it impacts your self-confidence and your self-esteem. And I think the boys use it more for video games. Would you be in favor of banning smartphones in schools? Oh, absolutely I would. Because research shows how our attention has really changed dramatically. I mean, you can probably remember that 30-second commercial we used to do in the elevators introducing ourselves. Well, that's now an eight-second commercial. Right. So, I mean, and they attribute a lot of the the way of our attention span is being decreased to the technology, to the smartphones, to the screens. And yet, Lee, a lot of schools here in the U.S., have not banned cell phones. There's been some push for it by some parents, but it seems a lot of school districts are reluctant to do it. What do you think is going on? Why? Well, I think there are some real variables in that. I think single parents that do not have a backup system really feel have an urgent need to be able to get in touch with their child whenever they need to. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of parents about that. So I think that there is a real level of connectivity. But I, I firmly believe the benefits of being able to put those smartphones down or to limit, you know, you can limit what can be done with a smartphone. I mean, I know some parents have, after thinking about it, have decided it, you know, it can only dial their number or it can only receive calls. So that's certainly one way. But, but usually it's just easier if you're going to use a smartphone, you just give them the smartphone. And I'm amazed. I have four-year-olds that come in with their parents into my the Brain Performance Center. Those four-year-olds, they can take that phone and they can do things. I, I have no idea how they do it. Four years old, they're already on there typing and bopping away. Absolutely. And that's Gen Z. I mean, Gen Z grew up with those smartphones. And if you look at their rate for depression and anxiety, it's pretty high. You mentioned, especially for girls, a lot of the issue is social media. And, of course, we've had the social media CEOs on Capitol Hill hundreds of times testifying about what they do right and do wrong. How do we kind of rein in social media, if you will, so that that psychological damage is not as great? Well, I think that, you know, it's got to be balanced. I, I know a lot of people enjoy social media. I There must be something wrong with me because I don't. Mm. And I don't really look at it. I don't really care what you had for breakfast. <laughs> but I think that if you balance it, and as parents, you, you know, this is the hard part. As parents, you've got to model behavior. If your kids see you on your phone for an hour at a time, what are they going to do? They're going to go pick up their their phone. So model behavior that it is really, it's not something that you do all the time. You know, maybe, maybe you, and depending upon age, the amount of time that they have access changes. But I just don't understand why a first grader, why a six-year-old needs to be looking 
at social media by themselves. If it's family social media, then do it with your mom or your dad or a sibling. Dr. Lee Richardson, founder of the Brain Performance Center. Great to talk.